And then what? Uh -huh. And then we're going to um, write our equation. The magnitude of the torque equals the force times the um, magnitude. No. Good. Yeah, no, it's not, yeah, the magnitude of it perpendicular. Is, yeah, that's perpendicular. good. Our perpendicular. And it is magnitude. That's right. Because after all, we've already worked out the sign, right? We've already figured right. out the sign, so there's no right. point putting in any more negative numbers. That's just going to mess up our right. sign. So the, pur the purpose of these <laughs> dots is to remind us just to plug in positive numbers for F and R perpendicular. Otherwise, we're going to mess up that nice sign that we already figured out. Okay. So that's going to equal a negative 339.2 times, two, times right. um, 2 meters. Good. So, it'll be a negative 78.4 um, newton meter. Good. Good. Okay. All right. Good. So that gives us uh, another torque that I can go back and put up in um, our picture. Now we know the torque from the left-hand weight. The torque from that left-hand weight was negative... 78.4 newton meters. Negative 78.4. So now we have two separate torques. The torque from the right-hand mass and the torque from the left-hand mass. Uh-huh. Okay. Good. All Wait right. Two of five, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, positive. Positive. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So that's torque. Why does it seem like that the mass, the one the heavier mass should have been? Oh, I know, because it was less distance. Right. Okay. Closer to the All right. Okay, I'm glad you're thinking about that. That's right. So what we've seen here is that the mass, obviously, a bigger mass tends to give you a bigger torque, but that can be canceled if it's, not a, if it's, if it's at a smaller distance. That's a very important conceptual intuition to think about there. Okay. All right. Okay. Now you can see why we're going to have to have a lot of pictures here. We have to have one main yeah. picture, and then we need to do an, a separate picture for each individual torque. If we tried to figure out each individual okay. torque on the main picture, it would turn into a, a, a spectacular mess. So we need one main mm -hmm. picture and then a separate picture for each torque. And each torque comes from each force. However many forces there are, those are the separate torques that we have to work out. Okay. Okay. Good. So the mm -hmm. 8 kilogram, does that not make a difference? That makes a difference, too. So now we have to work through that. Oh. Um, so uh, let's see here. I think I might not have given you quite enough uh, information, though, for that. So perhaps I should have told you... Uh, that this distance is... <laughs> what didn't you tell us, Stephen? I should have said that this distance is half a meter. Point oh, five meters. Okay. I should have said this little distance here was point five meters, half a meter. Okay. On both ends? Uh, no. I, um, you can figure out how, how long the distance is on the other... Oh, well, is it 0.5 on the other end? You can figure that out for yourself. So this is point five. Okay, she's back. I'm back. Okay. So we have to identify the force. Where is this force being applied? Uh, it's it's being applied down on the pivot. Like so it's down also. It's going It's down because it's a weight. Now a where weight. is it applied? What point on the teeter totter is it applied at? Well, it's applied at the center of mass of the teeter totter, right? The weight of the teeter-totter must be at the center of mass of the teeter-totter? Does yeah. that make sense? Okay. Um, so the, the center of uh, the teeter-totter here is this point, right? Here's the center, okay, so here's yep. where that weight is. Notice that in this particular case, the fulcrum is not underneath the center. 
It could have been underneath the center, mm, but it isn't right. in this case. The fulcrum is not underneath the center. Um, so you can't right. always assume that the fulcrum is underneath the center of the teeter-totter. It may or may not be. So the weight here is not at the same place as the fulcrum. Right. Okay. So that, so then that, oh, I get it, I think. Okay, so you've got that weight coming down, so then that's going to have a, 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 a number. Yeah, let's go ahead and calculate that number. So that'll be 78.8 times 78.4. Newtons. Um, so then what, do you have a force going up then from the pivot? On the yeah, we would, um, but let's deal with one force okay. at a time. Okay. So let's just deal with the weight of the teeter-totter now. Okay. So I've drawn a whole new picture now, because now I'm dealing with the, um, the torque from the weight of the, uh, the teeter-totter. All right, so we've done our step okay. one, and we've drawn the force. And when you're ready, tell me what step two is. Uh, step two is to identify the pivot. And where's that? That is um, to the left. Of yeah, that the is at the fulcrum. Right Good. Uh -huh, All right. Fulcrum. And then tell me what the next step is. The next one is to... Um, let me think. R, so it says draw R. So now are we going to draw R or R perpendicular? That's what I was trying to... Oh, it, okay, this force is coming down similar to the boxes, so I would right. think there would be R perpendicular. Yeah, again, R would not be a good idea. I'm going to temporarily yeah. draw in R. Here's R. Yeah. R, we don't know how long that is. That's kind of a slanty right. line. We don't know how long R is. That yeah. would be from the pivot to the point of application of the force. That would be, make yeah. the problem much more difficult. So yeah, w how about R perpendicular? Where does that start yeah. and where does that end? What does R perpendicular look like? R perpendicular is getting... Wait, wait, wait. Can you, sorry, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Rewind real quick. Just say it for me one more time. So we're not going to choose the R, Y. I mean, I well, see here's R, R perpendicular, right? Mm -hmm. Here's R. Now, we don't know how long R is, do we? Right, okay. That's why we shouldn't draw it. We want to draw things that we know how to use to, to solve the problem. I, in this problem, we weren't given that distance, so that's not a useful approach on this problem. Okay. So I in general, it. if you're given a problem where you're told the distances for R, you should use the left-hand approach. But if you're given a problem where you're told the distances for R perpendicular, we should use the R perpendicular approach. Okay. So I'll go ahead and erase R, because that's just going to confuse us here. And again, when you're ready, so where should our perpendicular start and end? What's our perpendicular going to look like? Um, it's going to be the line that goes parallel from the pivot to the um, point of uh, to, to the, the line, line of, of the, the force. force. To the line of the force. Yeah. So that's going to go parallel to the line of the force. Perpendicular the to the line of the force. Perpendicular. Our perpendicular right. is perpendicular <laughs> the, the, to the line okay, of the yeah, force, right, yeah. and it's a horizontal line. It'll be horizontal yeah. in this case. Okay. So we've done our step three. And while we're on that, again, I, I really should have said, when I say draw something, I mean draw it and calculate it if possible. So this will take a little work. Okay. You weren't told exactly how long that distance was. You just should be able to figure it out from the distances that you were given. So take your time. How can we calculate how long this distance is from the distances that you were given? Uh, well, we've got 0.5 meters from the left side of the end to the center of the 4-kilogram <clears throat> box. And then we've got 2 meters from right. here to the center of the pivot. So then from the center of the pivot to the end, to the center of the box on the right, we've got 7 meters. So 7 Now that seven meters actually we oh, don't care about. Oh, we've got ten about. meters. Okay, we've got ten meters total. Oh, it's five meters from the center. This is this, the whole length is ten. Right in the middle, it's going to be five. Right. So then five minus uh, two, three. So it'd be three meters. Close. Okay. So are, are you f um, can you take a look at uh, what I have on my whiteboard here? So I've okay, labeled this yeah. 0.5 distance and the 2 distance, right? 
And what right. we want to know is we want to know this distance, right? Oh, 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5, okay. Yeah. So it's 5 minus um, 2.5. That's right. So it's 2.5. Yeah, so this distance will also be 2.5. So you might have to do a little bit of geometry on these types of questions. Okay. So that would give us, uh, so what's our perpendicular again? Our perpendicular is 2.5. Okay, good. Good. All right. So again, okay. um, in, in my step-by-step -step method that I hope you have in your notes, every time I mm -hmm. say draw, I really yep. should say draw and if possible, calculate. Okay. I was just trying to save so space on the whiteboard. So we calculated our... Good.